We have got one break tonight, and it is the back half of a case of Don Russ football. We started this on Wednesday when it came out, and we're going to finish up the case here tonight. Before we start ripping, though, uh, we have a little bit of information to go over, so let's go ahead and get that up on the screen, if I can get my mouse to cooperate with me anyway. So, feedback, 100% automated. Uh, that is really just so you never have to wait on me, because, oh, goodness knows, I am always uh, sorting and shipping and breaking and listing, and uh, the, the automated feedback means you get it instantly. And, of course, the other thing there is to say thank you. I appreciate you bidding and breaking and chatting with me, hanging out here and keeping me company on this Saturday night. We're taking a look at what is coming up in the days ahead. So tomorrow night, Sunday night and Monday night, are both going to be off nights. A lot of sorting to do, a lot of things to get out the door. And we don't usually take back-to-back -back nights off, but we're going to here to get caught up on everything. Then we'll be back at it Tuesday night with a half case of Allen and Ginter baseball, which is the back half of a case we started a week or so ago. On Wednesday, we'll be at the another new release day there. And the with Allen and Ginter oh, baseball, which is good grief. Sorry, my iPad suddenly decided to start um, relaying what I was saying. Fun. Uh, <laughs> so on Wednesday night, we'll start at 830 Eastern, 530 Pacific. We will open a half case of Bowman Sterling Baseball. Those are loose boxes from a shared case. Uh, an eight box, I started to say 10. It's an eight box in our case of Unparalleled Football and a half case of Heritage High Number Baseball. Once again, loose boxes from a shared case. Then on Thursday night, we'll open a case of TriStar Autograph Football jerseys and another inner case of Unparalleled Football. So that's what we're looking like for the days ahead. For tonight, there is just the one break. It is Don Russ football. It's a half case break. It is break number two. Hopefully everybody read the listing description and you already know this, but in case you didn't and you don't, base cards do not ship to the teams in this break. They have their own bidding spot. So there's a big list in the description of what does go to the teams. It's autographs, relics, you know, numbered cards, rated rookie cards that say rated rookie on them, parallel, etc., but base cards do not. All right, what else have we got on this page? Probably Wednesday is when I'm thinking I'm going to be able to get this out the door to you, and if I can get it sent to you sooner than Wednesday, I certainly will be happy to do so, and every once in a while my week will go off the rails and something might go out a day later than I predict or project, but in this case I think Wednesday is a pretty safe bet. Every team is going to pull cards in here, so we should have no need for any consolation cards or anything of that sort in this break. It is a nine-box half case of 2019 Don Russ football. This, again, is break number two, so the back half of the case. And everything we're opening tonight ended tonight on eBay, Saturday night, the 10th of August. We've got team names there on the left-hand side, winning bidders across from each team on the opposite side. And yeah, so I guess that's it. We're actually going to get rolling here. We're ready to start ripping and see what we can find. So our Don Russ, there's uh, a lot of cards in here. And the first box that we do, I will go a little bit slower through it to give you an idea of what kind of inserts and things are in here. Then when we go through our subsequent boxes, we'll go through, through them quite a bit faster. We won't stop and uh, spend as much time on those inserts as we do the first time through. So we're looking for one autograph card and one memorabilia card per box on average. Mimi always likes to throw in that on average to uh, do a little CYA, I guess. And occasionally, you know, we might uh, have an instance where they replace a hit with a points card or something like that. And if that happens, we would, of course, award the points card at the end of the break using random.org. And what else? What else do we need to know about this? I think that's the main, the main stuff with it tonight. Jay Allen, you have got Falcons, Panthers, and Jets, and you've got an early start, so you're going to get uh, go get some Z's tonight. 
All right, well, I will do my best to get you some Falcons, Panthers, and Jets, my friend. Hopefully we can make that happen for you with a little good luck, a little good mojo tonight. All right, let's start taking a look at what we've got. So this, uh, you know what I forgot to do, didn't I? Ha 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 ha, yeah. I forgot to change up the focus. That's what, yeah, yeah, that's kind of important. Background's going to go out of focus a little bit there. Uh, but instead, we'll be able to see our cards a little better, right? That's a little, a little better look for us. So this is an example of just a base card. So all the cards that look like that are base cards, okay? And they go to that base card bidding spot. Now, we'll find loads of these uh, predominantly numbered to 100 when you see them with that uh, kind of hollow foil finish and the silver color. These are not numbered, but there's lots of these inserts that we'll find throughout Action All Pros. Uh, this is an example of a rated rookie. It's also the canvas version, but anything that actually says rated rookie on it is not a base card. If it doesn't say rated rookie on it, like this one, right, does not say rated rookie on it, that is an example of a base card. So once again, base cards to their own bidding spot. Loads of uh, inserts. This is another example. It is a die cut. Happens to be gold. It's numbered to 25. And let's just go ahead and put that in a slightly bigger sleeve because honestly, those die cuts are a real um, pain to try to get in a regular sleeve with all those little points on them. It's just much easier usually to put them in. And a little bit wider one seems to make it go along a tad bit easier anyway. So the Rookies, that is another example of an insert that it's, it's got a nice little pattern on it, but it's not numbered. We'll see it a bunch as we will see Gridiron Kings a bunch. More base. And what do we have here? Ooh, that's quite nice. That's our first autograph that we're taking a look at. And that's for the Falcons with Matt Ryan numbered to 25. So how about that, kids? Yeah, if you've got the Atlanta Falcons, I mean, Matt Ryan doesn't really come out of too many products very often here. You've gotten him right away out of out of Don Russ football, number to 25, no less. Another insert series, so that does go to the teams, as do those inserts, as do those inserts. Advertising card, we'll find a bunch of those. We don't worry too much about them. There are lots and lots of them. Usually I will flip them front and back, though, just to make sure there's no card stuck to it, because every once in a while there will be a card stuck to it. The Champ is here. There's a whole series of those. Um, they are all headed to the Patriots. That's base, of course. All the Champ is here, I mean, are, you know, featuring the Patriots. So these with the red borders, they are press proofs. So they go to the teams uh, because they are a parallel there. And they are not numbered, those press proofs. But they are, well, press proofs. So for whatever that's worth, there's... Rated Rookie. And Orange. We're going to find uh, some orange as we go along tonight. This one is numbered to 13, which is, I think, jersey number for this guy, right? Isn't it? Yeah, I think there are some of these in here that are jersey numbers. And that is T.Y. Hilton for the Colts. Dominators. Those are not numbered either, generally speaking. If we happen to run across one that is, I will certainly flag it and let you know that we have found one. Jay Allen, you said you thought you were going to say hey, maybe Matt Ryan was going to hit tonight when you were bidding. All right. Well, you're on it, man. That's a good way to get things started, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't do much better than that for the Falcons. I mean... I, I mean, I guess unless it was maybe a one-of-one, one, but that was a pretty good little hit. 
David Johnson and the Cardinals is our relic out of box number one. That is number 299. So we found both of our hits out of here, and we are now just uh, looking through to see all the other fun things, all of our parallels and inserts and stuff like that. Jay Allen, you want to see Christian McCaffrey come out now for your Panthers? Well, that would be nice. That would be nice. I'd say that Matt Ryan, though, probably covered the price of admission. Uh, well, maybe for all three teams. I didn't look at the bidding for how anything ended up tonight. But that Matt Ryan will, will bring you a little coin when you resell it, I would imagine. If you resell it, which I expect. I mean, I assume you that's what you're going to do. I don't think he's a personal collection for you. The best I can recall anyway, I will admit. Sometimes I do forget who's got what in their PCs. There's Derek Carr. That is numbered to 68, oddly enough, for the Raiders. We'll see other purple ones that will be numbered higher to like 500. And honestly, I don't know the difference in why some are low, lower numbered and some are higher. But anyway, uh, when we see one that is to 500, I will, of course, point it out to you so you'll know what we're looking for with that going forward. And this is numbered to 100, a little Pat Mahomes Highlights. So, highlights, again, we'll see a lot of, a few of them may be numbered. I mean, obviously that one was, but they're probably not all going to be numbered. Power formulas, we'll see plenty of those. There's a little Legends of the Fall. Those, again, if they're numbered, I will stop and point it out. If not, we'll keep on trucking. So this is the purple one that's numbered to 500. Now, why some of them are to 500 and some of them are less, your guess is as good as mine, but most of them are to 500. Occasionally, they're not. Usually, they are. Whoops, now see, there's an example of why you got to flip them around because there was... Somebody hanging out there on the back. There was a, a base card trying to hitch a ride. And we've got another die cut coming here. This one is for the Saints. And it is Alvin Kamara, numbered to 75 with a... Nice looking little die cut card here. And uh, speaking of nice looking, my Cincinnati Reds. Oh man, we've got a young little uh, rookie that we called up after the All Star break and got a. I mean, I think actually we've called him up once before, but. He maybe only played a handful of games. I vaguely just barely even remember him because I think it wasn't a very good outing. But he certainly has been good since he's come up after the All-Star break. He's uh, played in, I think, 10 games or so, and he's already hit seven home runs, and he hit three of them tonight <laughs> already against the Cubs. I don't know. He may have hit more since I last saw it. But he went up to bat three times and popped out three home runs. Aristides Aquino, and he is lighting it up for my little Cincinnati Reds. In fact, I think my Reds were up like nine zip, or thereabouts, the last I saw. Now again, things may have changed since then, but one would hope that we could manage to hang on. But the young rookie certainly looking good. I don't even know if there are. I mean, I guess there are cards somewhere. 
somewhere along the way in Bowman for Aquino, but I, I need to look into that, I guess. Kay's here. Hi, Kay. Still 9 nothing. you said. Okay. All right. Good to know. Good to know. I mean, you never know with the Reds. We've seen them do stranger things. Like the one game where they gave up 12 runs in one inning. And that hadn't been that long ago. But for the most part, we were looking pretty good tonight. And Sonny Gray was pitching. So I would like to think that maybe maybe we were able to stretch Sonny into uh, six. Well, it wouldn't be six to stretch him. Maybe we could e either have him for six or stretch him to seven would be great. Kind of keep things on track. Now, of course, again, as I said, as we go into these other boxes, as you notice, we're kind of, we've seen all these types of inserts. You know more what you're looking for and what you're seeing, so that's why we're going uh, faster through them now. This is a Derek car. It is numbered to four, so that's another orange one that is uh, tied to a jersey number. So the Raiders with Derek car to four get that one. Um, who else is here? You said pull you a nice Bengals autograph, the, the W8. All right. And Jay Allen says the Reds always give away their up and coming talent. Well, you know what happens a lot? Uh, you've probably seen this play out with my Reds before. Of course, we're a small market team. We don't have a big payroll and you'll get those kids and we'll be able to keep them for a period of time but when they're about to have arbitration or hit free agency or whatever we don't hardly ever have the we hardly ever pony up the money to keep them so you know we usually have them for a few years and then and then they go on somewhere else so fans of the game Erin Andrews because she's too wishy-washy to pitch, pitch, pick pick Woo, too wishy-washy to pick a team. <laughs> she will set up there in housekeeping. And at the end of the break, we will use random.org to give that one out. Of course, really, she's not picking a team because she's a broadcaster, and I think, like, they're not supposed to, but... But we will see. Marcus Mariota, number to 75, die-cut Tennessee Titans. But the other thing about the Reds, though, Jay Allen, is that a lot of times we give away uh, our young guys and chases for starting pitchers and things that we get all these rental players and you know how that goes. But right now, the group that we have um, pitching, I mean, I think we have for at least another year team control. So maybe we'll hang on to some of our young guys and dare I say it, finally start climbing out of the cellar for real? I don't know. All right, it is Leonard Fournette and the Jags. <clears throat> Excuse me, number to 299. That is our relic hit out of box number two. We are, of course, still looking for our autograph in box number two. But as much as I was kind of sorry to see Puig traded away, I mean, I got kind of fond of Puig when he has been here in Cincinnati for the half season that we had him. So even though I was kind of sad to see him go, when I was thinking, man, how are we going to re replace his, his uh, production at the plate? Well, that's what made room for Aquino to come up. And I would say he has effectively replaced his production at the plate. Oh, Kyle Farmer just hit a home run. Nice. I like that kid, too. We got him, of course, from the Dodgers in the offseason. He, he and Alex Wood and uh, Kyle Farmer. He's a, uh, well, he can, gosh, they've, he can play about anywhere. I think they've had him playing a bunch of different positions uh, throughout his career. He's currently playing catcher for us for the most part. And... The other night, we ran out of players, and they asked him to pitch, 
and it was hilarious. He gets out there. I mean, he was throwing so slowly that it didn't even register on the radar gun. But it was like starting out so high and just dropping right into the zone. He actually didn't uh, have any have anybody score on him or anything. That's to 25, a die cut. Miles Jack for the Jags. Yeah, I don't think he walked anybody either, although he might have given up. I think he maybe gave up one hit or something, but he looked pretty good out there for a couple innings, all things considered. Uh, Greg, you are asking about the little white uh, spacers that come in here. Yeah, those are kind of like gold to me. I save those along with those little advertising cards. I use those in the future to help protect things during shipment and whatnot. So yeah, I love seeing those come in products. This is DK Metcalf is our autograph out of box number two, and that is headed to the Seahawks. So yes, indeed, I am always quite happy when we see, especially the white uh, block type cards. Those used to be found more readily in products than they are these days. But boy, I like finding them. My stash is getting kind of low, too. We haven't opened as much stuff with them this year, so I use them a lot. In fact, I actually asked uh, somebody how much it would cost or where they got them made. I have a rep who used to work for Upper Deck, and I said, hey, man, do you know how much those cost or where you got them made? I was just going to try to have a bunch made. And he said, no, he couldn't remember where they were made, but they were um, expensive, he said. And I was like, really? You would not think they would be, but... He indicated that they were, kind of for what they are, I mean, obviously not expensive like, you know, buying a house, kind of expensive, but expensive for what they are anyway, apparently. This is numbered to 500, is D.D. Westbrook for the Jags. And that is the end of that box. And give me one hot second here to get my stacks organized over here on the sorting side of the table. And we'll move on into the next one. Oh, Jay Allen, I see you jumped in and answered that question too for Greg. Thank you. I appreciate it. And Greg updated me on the score. 10 to 4. Nice. Uh, and Aquino was up and the Cubs walked him. I'm not surprised. Every time he's been at bat, he's hit a home run. <laughs> so you would have thought maybe after the second time that he did that, they would have walked him. <laughs> but they let him club in a third one before now they've wised up and said, mm, Buzz, thanks for playing. <laughs> we'll walk you. So there you go. Now the... Uh, the Cubs have wised up, it sounds like, a little bit in regard to him tonight. Oh, you were saying 10-4 as in 10-4 like as I got you. You were not giving me a score. You were saying 10-4 like CB 10-4 as in gotcha, understand. The score is 10 nothing. I see. That's what happens. I get a get a wrong one track mind, right? I was thinking Cincinnati Reds when I saw that. But I'm happy when they get good wins because you know what? It's got to be terribly depressing as a player, wouldn't you think? If you just were losing, losing, losing all the time like they were there for a while and especially when you're just getting it handed to you. So, I think it's nice when they have a night where they can really get things rolling. That was Jamal Adams to 115. It was also a purple border. So, Panini kind of just seems to be making up whatever numbers they want and putting them on a purple border. <laughs> Unlike Tops, which very handily they keep their color and number scheme consistent throughout their products. Tops sadly does not. 
They don't even keep it consistent within the same product, much less through all the products. Okay, why is that? Well, there we go, finally. This is Jalen Hurd, and it is a die cut headed to the 49ers. It is number 275. But yeah, I do wish that they would keep their stuff numbered the same. But they just don't do it. TJ Hawkinson coming for the Lions. We're going to flip it and see if it's an autograph. My guess is that it is. Oh, yes. Very nice. Lions with TJ Hawkinson to 299. And I like that because we don't see a ton of TJ Hawkinson autographs. It's not like they've flooded the market with them. And I think he's going to be pretty good. So. You asked for some Bengals earlier. Well, we did not get you an autograph yet, but we do have you an Andy Dalton relic numbered to 299. So at least your Bengals are on the map, so to speak. We know the mojo hasn't forgotten about them anyway. Yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff that I hope to get sorted and ready to ship tomorrow. And, of course, Monday, obviously, we'll be shipping. But I'm going to try to get a bunch of stuff done so that we can get closer to square one anyway. They've just been releasing so many products so quickly, and which is fine when they don't have a zillion base cards in them but when they do have a zillion cards in them like this well that makes it a little more challenging hi rodney um guys have we had any raiders like we may have had so we had a numbered raider uh, i think we had a Derek carr numbered to four but i don't offhand remember one that's relic or autograph but you do have a low number Derek Carr to four I remember that because it was his jersey number numbered to his jersey number I mean but beyond that I'm not certain that is numbered to 50 it's James Connor for the Steelers and how are you tonight Rodney by the way how are things going how's your weekend how's your day etc you got your Raiders tonight then? I'm assuming you got them? Or are you just asking in general, but you don't have them? I tell you what, there are so many parallels and, and things in Donruss football. It's kind of crazy. I wonder what would happen if they just made it as no um, no base cards at all. <laughs> and they just made the whole thing all parallels. It's all either parallel or numbered. I guess it couldn't be a parallel if you didn't have a base card for it to be parallel to, though, huh? So it would have to just be all inserts, I guess, and numbered things. So there's a Travis Kelsey purple. It is numbered to 103. So those purple ones are just crazy numbered to all kinds of weird stuff. Well, weird in the sense that it is non-traditional numbering, I mean. Do have a little bit more Donruss. I did not buy much of it. It's because it's so labor intensive, honestly. So we have a, a tad bit more, but not a lot. I cut back on the amount of it I ordered this ordered this year because um, there's just wow, so much stuff right now. Crazy, crazy. Whoops, that one was a base.
We have completed three, and this is box four that is coming out of the wrappers, or coming out of the box, getting ready to come out of the wrappers, is box four of nine. So this is a pretty good time of year for sports. We've got, uh, of course, our pro football preseason. We're rolling along with baseball still. We're thinking about college football gearing up pretty soon. We still have a little tennis left to go. This is a fun time of year when things start to overlap. I like it. Justice Hill and the Ravens. That is numbered to 299. So our autograph out of box number four comes out pretty quickly tonight. Comes out way up near the front of the box. And as does our relic. So we're finding both of our hits pretty quickly out of this fourth box. Jared Goff and the Rams. That's a nice looking relic. Number to 100, three colors in there. Bradley is asking if we have any bears. Um, I do not think so. I would not 100% swear to that fact, but I don't think so. Now, numbered cards, I could not, I mean, I'm not talking about numbered cards. There's loads of numbered cards and things like that. I'm speaking strictly uh, autographs and relics. I don't remember seeing any. Another fans of the game. Ooh, we're in a hot box because we already had an autograph and now we have an extra one. And when you know it's Aaron Andrews, we would have to get Aaron Andrews. All the other fans of the game, you know what? They pick a team, but she doesn't because she's a reporter. So along with her base card, we'll go her autograph parallel up there into housekeeping. And what will happen is we will use random.org to give out both her autograph card and her base card at the end of the break. Well, it is her base card, but it is still a parallel, so it, you know, obviously doesn't go to the base card bidding category, just to clarify. A Jared Cook die cut, numbered to 75 for the Saints, and the Raiders with a Derek Carr insert more Aaron Andrews. We got a lot of Aaron Andrews tonight, don't we? We are overrun with Aaron Andrews. Alexander Madison. But still nice because it's a little, it's a bonus hit in that box. We'd already found a signature, so so either way, even though it is just Aaron Anderson, we'll take it, I guess. Some of those surprisingly bring decent money for different things you know coaches broadcasters other celebrities like you find in Allen and Gunter and things of that nature sometimes it brings really good money even when they do archives and they put in like regular people <laughs> you know like the guy who goes to all the games trying to catch the foul balls and all that sometimes you pull one of those autographs and you can at least get uh, a little bit of money for it, so you never know, I guess. This DK Metcalf is numbered to 100, and there's a Matt Stafford Dominators. Yeah, we've definitely, definitely in a little hot box here. Vinatieri to 100 for the Colts. O'Reilly Ridley. A 
I like the Dominator's inserts. I think they're cool looking. Tell you what, I'm going to do one quick little thing here. If you will be so kind as to bear with me. I want to try to get our keep our lower numbered stuff where we can recap it and I just realized I stacked some higher numbered stuff right there in the middle of it so I'm just gonna fix that real quickly and then that way I can keep them separated from this point onward which is what I intended to do anyway nice messed up and stacked a big uh, bunch of them on top of it by accident so now I fished them back out We'll be able to recap them a little easier. Let's see what we can find in here to make things interesting. There was a, a bear's insert anyway, a dominator's insert. Yeah, sometimes they get me with that when they're flipped over the opposite way. You know, you get trained to think, oh, it's going to be an autograph, and then a lot of times it isn't. <laughs> they and certain products especially, then they fool me. And I'm thinking, oh, that's going to be a nice autograph if we flip it over. And whoops, it isn't. They're sneaky like that over there at Panini. Greg Olson is numbered to 88, does that say? And an action all pros insert for Travis Kelsey. So I heard Kyler Murray looked good in his uh, start preseason debut for the Arizona Cardinals from what I read anyway it said that he was looked pretty good out there he made most of uh, his throws I guess and seemed to be pretty well in command of what was going on so it'll be interesting to get a good look at him later on I haven't watched any of the preseason games yet I'm usually um, working. So I haven't seen any of them, including my Steelers. I did see the score, though, that the Steelers won. Also read that Lamar Jackson looked pretty good for the Ravens and was throwing more and running less, and which is, of course, what they want him to do. And Seemed like he had a pretty good grasp of the new playbook as well, so. And then that kid for the Browns, I can't remember that kid's name, the one that talked his way into a tryout, but like down with the Dolphins or somebody. Anyway, somehow or another he got picked up by the Bears. And, uh, of course, he's still trying to make the team, but I guess he had a maybe a kickoff return for touchdown or something. And they seem to all be celebrating that, his, the whole team, so I was glad for that kid. Speaking of the Cleveland Browns, how about Eric Metcalf? Signature marks autograph hit.
So yeah, I can't remember that kid's name, but I just thought, you know what? Good for you, kid. You're, you're. I hope he makes the team. He's made his own luck to get this far, so here's hoping he keeps it up and uh, makes the team. Oh, the Browns. Who did I say? You said, oh, I said the Bears. I didn't mean to say the Bears. I meant to say the Browns. I guess, did I see something that said Bears and Bears came out of my mouth? I meant to say Browns. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I know he's a Brown. <laughs> but that's, I mean, I could like visualize the play. I watched it on um, replay and then I somehow apparently said Bears. Didn't even realize I did. So, sorry about that, guys. I was, in my head, I was thinking, you know, how different the... AFC North was going to potentially look this year in terms of talent. And so there you go. That's how my mind wanders. That's how it got there. For the Patriots, it is Gronkowski, newly retired Gronk. That's to 299. And the Titans with a hollow foil, the 100, just of the, the team there, the field. Antonio Brown still causing drama even though he's gone away from the Steelers it's now the Raiders drama but um, I guess he's now protesting because he can't wear the helmet that he wants to wear it's because it doesn't meet the current safety protocols you know they update them all the time and so he took this helmet which of course was in Steelers colors <laughs> and just painted it to match the Raiders. And apparently, from what I read, the paint job was, like, not exactly a perfect match anyway. But he painted it, and now they, you know, they're saying, no, you cannot use that helmet. It doesn't meet regulations. you got to get a different helmet, etc. So now he's throwing a big diva fit that he can't wear his... I guess it's the only helmet he's worn since he's been in the league, and they don't even make that helmet anymore. So I thought, well, <laughs> at least it's not like he's going to go to another team and suddenly, you know, not have drama. So, nope. <laughs> he's <laughs> bringing that drama right along with him, and now you're the lucky recipient of it if you're an Oakland Raiders fan. So he's filed a grievance, I think, with the NFL, you know, he should be able to wear his helmet, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, at some point you do kind of think, well, if you're dumb enough to want to get your brains knocked out, then <laughs> fine. But we know that's not true. Numbered to 50, it is Zach Cunningham for the Texans. Rodney, you said Antonio Brown reported your Twitter account for real because you called him a pansy ass in in a tweet. <laughs> Does he even run his own social media accounts? I would figure he would have a team. Most of those guys have a team that run them, you know, and they may occasionally post stuff themselves, but a lot of them have people that manage them for them. That was numbered to 17, uh, Simons, Jeffrey uh, Simons, Simmons rather, sorry, Simmons for the Titans. Simons is our basketball rookie. You can tell what I opened last night, right? Mm-hmm. But that's kind of petty, even even if his team, rep why, like, why would they, you know, you've got to be able to t take some criticism. You're a professional athlete. You've been coached, which is just a more acceptable way of criticizing, <laughs> but you've been coached your entire life if you're a professional athlete, and somebody, you know, calls you a pansy on Twitter, and you report the account, and, and even so, like, what would Twitter do about that? I would think nothing, right? 
Oh, no, you said you can't. You can't go on Twitter for a week now. Just because of that? Well, I mean, why can't you say that? Why'd you get banned for that? I mean, if you counted all the times somebody said something nasty about somebody else, nobody would ever be allowed to use Twitter. That's numbered to 25. It's a die cut. Quandre digs for the Tigers. I mean, that's not like threatening or harassment or anything. What even are the grounds for saying they've suspended you for a week? Although, frankly, like, who cares? Stupid Antonio Brown. <laughs> I mean, apparently can dish it out but can't take it kind of guy. I don't know. But I will tell you this, I don't think they're going to let him wear that helmet, so he can throw a little diva fit all he wants, but with all the focus that has been on safety in recent years and concussion protocol and all that stuff, they're not going to relent and let him wear an unsafe helmet from a decade ago. So he ought to be smart enough to know that, but I guess he's not. That's the 84, Joe Flacco and the Broncos. Actually, I think he is smart enough to know it. I think he just thinks that he's got enough, what's the word I'm looking for, Um, for power or pull or something that he can just get them to change their mind is more likely what he's thinking. All right, we have opened five. We have four remaining, including the one that I'm taking out of the box right now. They said it's against the rules of Twitter. But what about it is against the rules? That's what I'm saying. I mean, people call people way worse than that on their, on a, I wouldn't even say an hourly basis. I'd say every second of every day someone's writing a, a tweet that says a lot more heinous stuff than that. Calling somebody a pansy. Rodney says they've sent him eight other helmets to try on and he refuses to try them on. Well, I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. I mean, like, I get the dude likes his helmet, but, you know, come on, safety regulations and safety features in everything have changed dramatically in the last decade from helmets to cars to anything else you can think of there's a, the difference in safety from 10 years ago and now might as well be from the stone ages and now and frankly he gets hit a lot so you would think he would want the best protection possible Of course, he doesn't have many plays left now. So if he tried to throw some kind of huge fit now, his only play would be like, yeah, that's it. I'm going to retire. I'm just going to leave the NFL. That would mean he doesn't have any, any contract or holdout or any of that stuff left in his pocket. So if he wants to carry onward, that's his only real threat, I think. wonder why they didn't catch it until now, though. Isn't that interesting? I wonder if it's a thing that the teams themselves have to report. So, in other words, the Steelers just let him keep it and let him get away with it to keep him happy. And then when the Raiders equipment guy saw it, he's like, uh-uh. <laughs> you figure that's probably it, right? It's probably not the NFL coming to inspect it. Andrew Luck, numbered to 25, with a gold die cut for the Colts. Oh, yeah, I don't think he's going to not play for real. I don't think he would. 
uh, as you point out, there is $30 million on the line. So, yeah, I think he'll play. I'm just saying he's unlike it was when he was with the Steelers and he had leverage. There, he's, he's out of leverage now. Damian Harris to 299, an autograph hit for the Patriots. And that is, uh, of course, our first hit out of this particular box. So we should still find ourselves a relic in here somewhere along the way. But meanwhile, um, Le'Veon Bell doesn't seem to be causing any drama. So that's good. Sounds like he might be integrating okay up there with the Jets and maybe we'll get himself back on track. Oh, the new helmet rule just became just went into effect this year. Okay, so well, that would explain it then. I just thought maybe the Steelers were just like, oh yeah, we can't deal with one more thing from you. <laughs> But that makes more sense. This is numbered to 75. It is Justin Simmons for the Broncos die cut. Yeah, that definitely makes uh, more sense. Actually, I thought it had already been in effect. So there you go. Shows you what I know. I thought that happened two or three years ago when they all had to, had to change to safer league approved kind of helmets. Maybe I'm just thinking back to when they were discussing it and trying to get it passed and all that. And I think it's funny that he painted it, though. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, that would just come off in games and things, right? I mean, paint's just going to come off and there's going to be those Steelers colors under there. <laughs> Can you imagine being in the middle of the game for your new team? Take a big whack to the head or whatever, and or it doesn't even have to be that. You know, any number of things could probably cause that paint to come right off there, and then all of a sudden you're out there playing in basically a Steelers helmet. <laughs> oh, mercy. Carson Wentz for the Philadelphia Eagles. That is our relic out of this box. It is numbered to 299 You know what? I'd like to make $30 million just in my lifetime, much less in one season. I swear to you, if somebody were paying me $30 million to show up and work like half a year, oh, kids, you would not hear a word out of me. <laughs> I would just be, I would put my head down and do my job and be so, so happy. That is numbered to 50. It is Joe Flacco and the Ravens. Yeah, I would be... Um, really quite quite happy to be paid that kind of money we have opened six we have three left counting what is coming out of the box right now so we're making a dent in it Still haven't gotten hard knocks watched. I've got to go back and get on demand and check that out. I got sucked into well, first of all, I decided to watch the last season of Orange is the New Black on Netflix. And let me tell you this, um, it is just depressing. <laughs> the entire last season is just one big barrel of just dark, depressing, heavy stuff, which I mean, okay, it is a show about people being in prison, but Usually, there's a little lightheartedness and levity to balance it out and whatnot. Boy, there is not in the final season. So, whew. yeah, I'm kind of glad to be done with that. And then I got sucked down the rabbit hole of some other Netflix series called What If? And I haven't totally figured out everything that's going on with it 
quite yet, but um, do you remember that movie with, I think it was Demi Moore, and some guy, I can't remember the name of the movie, but some guy in like Vegas, some millionaire or something, paid her and her husband like a million dollars for her to spend the night with him or something like that. What was the name of that movie? Anyway, I think it's got sort of this that premise about it, but yet it's not maybe exactly going to be that. So, anyway, I got sucked down that rabbit hole starting that, and I should have watched Hard Knocks instead. Oh, did I say Flacco for the Ravens? I'm sorry. He's a Bronco, obviously. Did I say he was a Raven? I'm just so used to saying Ravens. But obviously, he's a Bronco. And it says Broncos on the card, and that's clearly where it will go. But it sounds like that I must have uh, accidentally said Ravens when I saw Joe Flacco. Out of habit. I apologize, kids, for that. Indecent Proposal, yeah, yeah, J. Allen and Kay, that's it, that's exactly um, what that movie was called, yeah. So I think this series has got maybe somewhat of a similar premise, but it's going to be more complex than that, which, well, it would have to be, because it's a series instead of just a movie, but anyway, I'm not one, here's the thing, though. Once I start one, if I get more than two or three episodes in, I feel compelled to finish the season, even if it kind of turns out to be not great. <laughs> this is numbered to 75, and it's for the Bears. Because I feel like, well, I've invested this amount of time, and then, like, what if it gets better? Maybe it's going to get better. Surely it's going to get better. You know, that's what you think. And then the next thing you know, you've wasted a week watching something that... It's just terrible. So I hope this is not going to be that. I hope it'll be good, but I am down the rabbit hole. There's Case Keenum numbered to 10 for the Redskins. Yeah, I usually put something on Netflix that can just play kind of in the background while I'm working on my iPad. I just let it kind of go. I listen to it more than I watch it, so it lends itself well to kind of slow-moving things, you know. Can't really do that if it's got a lot of action in it because you can't watch it as much as I listen to it, but it works well for the slow burn stuff. Oh, you said Abraham is your new favorite raider now because he gave Gruden some grief. <laughs> well, that, I guess, is in Hard Knocks. All right, good. So I know one thing. I know there'll be at least something to look forward to in there. See Jonathan Abram giving uh, Chucky the business, it sounds like. Yeah, I definitely want to watch it. It's usually pretty interesting, but most uh, of the time. Kind of fun to get a little behind the scenes look at things anyway. Wonder if they'll have anything about Antonio and his helmet drama. Of course, obviously, he's had the thing with his feet, too. So he's already off to a rousing start up there in Oakland. <laughs> oh, indeed. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I had somebody jump the pile there. We're going to pick him up and take a little better look at him and make sure he's okay. It is a base card, but nonetheless, you know, if one jumps out of the pile on me, we like to give them the once over. And Jordan Reed is who it was and does not appear to be any worse for the wear. Ooh, now Jonathan Abram probably shouldn't be giving grief to Derek Carr. Well, you probably shouldn't be doing it to your head coach either, realistically. 
but it would make more sense to do it with the head coach than your quarterback. That's to 50, T.J. Watt and the Steelers. Because, man, that quarterback, he's the, he's the bread and butter. You don't want that guy on your wrong side. What was he mad? I mean, what was it about? What was he giving? Uh, what was he giving Derek Carr grief about? Well, I guess you don't have to say it because I gotta. I'll watch it, but eventually. Darius Geis, our autograph hit out of this box, numbered to ten for the Redskins. It'll be good to get a look at him. Of course, tore his ACL last year in preseason, so we didn't. Get to see him at all his rookie year. Richard Sherman and the 49ers is our relic. That is numbered to 100. Ooh, we got a little test. Oh, a little test test. That, of course, will go to the teams. That will not, that's not considered base. So that goes to our teams. To the team bidding positions, I mean. You know what I meant, I think. I hope. <laughs> I hope you know what I meant. Oh, Jay Allen, you watch a lot of the older sitcoms and stuff in the background? Yeah, I do that some, too. Uh, it just depends. I've watched so much of some of those, like Friends, and, you know, there's a lot of those that I've just watched over and over and over. Everybody Loves Raymond, etc., where... I literally know every word that's going to come out on some of those episodes. So I just, you know, wanted a little change of pace. So I started poking around in Netflix after I watched uh, Orange is the New Black. And you know how to give you like new stuff or stuff you might like or whatever. I don't remember. It was in one of those little categories was this what if thing. So I thought, eh, well, why not? Why not check it out? But I do. I wish, you know, the show I wish that they would stream is the Carol Burnett show. When I was very young, my parents and my sister, who's older than me by quite a bit or a fair amount, uh, that's something that the family always watched was the Carol Burnett show, her variety show. And I still remember a lot of sketches and skits from that show in part. And it was always so good, so funny. Uh, that's one that I wish somebody would have available for streaming. I would watch that every day, all day. But, but that one's not out there for streaming. And I Love Lucy, that's another one. You know, I Dream of Jeannie. Any of those kind of shows I would, I would be able to watch over and over too. Rodney, you said it was at the end at the team lunch, and Carr gave him a look to kill. <laughs> oh, well, I will have to be sure and uh, keep an eye out for that then. Senmo, um, we pulled Matt Ryan was our very first autograph to 25. Of course, you probably just saw that Darius guys to 10. Uh, there's been a Damian Harris, a TJ Hawkinson. Oh, what else, guys, autograph-wise? I can't remember all of them, but of course we will for sure recap it, Sinmo. We're on box eight of nine that's coming out of the wrappers right now. And then once we finish looking through everything that's in this box, we will give away the stuff that's got to go out there by way of random.org. And then after that, we will recap the autograph and relic stuff. So, so that way you can catch up on anything that you might have missed. It looks like it's numbered to 83, an orange one for Terry McLaurin, rated rookie. Oh, yeah, you might be right. Jay Allen says a lot of those shows, like the Carol Burnett and whatever, are tied up with rights to, like, the Time Life 
video series and stuff that they have the rights to sell the DVDs and maybe that's what keeps them from being able to stream and stuff. You might be right about that. Although I think that was a CBS show, wasn't it? I Love Lucy was also, I think. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll eventually show up on that CBS All Access, that new, well, it's not new anymore, but the streaming service that CBS started for their content. Maybe it'll show up on there at some point. And then um, Dick Van Dyke is another one. I don't remember watching Dick Van Dyke as a, as a child, though. That I don't know if that predated me. I guess it probably did. I don't know. But I like to go watch it in reruns and things. I think that's a good show, too. Okay, you remember Carol Burnett and Red Skelton? Yeah, I don't really remember much about Red Skelton, but, um, I mean, I know the name, but I don't really remember much about him. But they would never make shows like that now because, well, A, I don't know how much of an audience they would have, but B... The budget for that would be astronomical. You know, she had all those big elaborate sets and costumes every week and all the guest stars and everything. I have to, I'm sure there's no way anybody in today's broadcast television world would commit to that kind of money. I did see where ESPN Plus is going to be bundled with Hulu and a new Disney Plus service all together for $13, I think, starting maybe in November. I don't get ESPN Plus right now because I just, you know, I have, I don't know, I just thought it wasn't maybe worth the money for just ESPN Plus by itself, honestly. But if they're going to bundle it with Hulu and Disney, I might pick it up. I think, I guess, that it's just additional content like other games that they don't show on one of the ESPN cable networks. I guess you could watch streaming on ESPN+. Plus. Does anybody have it? Anybody know if that's how it works or not? Jimmy G with a die cut for the 49ers, numbered to 75. I would love to be able to use it to get like some out of market football games and things, but I don't know if you can, if they have that on there. It's numbered to 50 for the Ravens. But, as I said, if it's bundled with all that other stuff, maybe it's worth it no matter what. I don't know. But I'm good. I might get it when it happens, when it comes out. Um, I don't know why that was facing backwards. If that's a short print or something, we're going to set that one aside. That may end up going to the teams. That may be a short print. Zadarius Smith is a Green Bay Packer. He is in a Ravens uniform, but uh, of course you can see there's the notation about when he was traded. But more importantly, um, it says Green Bay Packers on the card and Green Bay Packers on the back as well. So Zadarius Smith autograph going to the Packers. He graduated from my alma mater, the University of Kentucky. Or did he go out as a junior or a senior? Maybe he didn't graduate, but... He may have left as a junior, I can't remember, but anyway, he went to my alma mater, played football there, possibly graduated. Really can't remember if he left in junior or senior year, isn't that terrible? Came out of the same class as Bud Dupree.
And this is a Passing the Torch. We have a Travis Kelsey relic for the Kansas City Chiefs and a Tony Gonzalez relic for the Kansas City Chiefs on the opposite side. So, very cool. Number 299 with a Passing the Torch relic. You know, we found one of those passing the torch one time that just had the same player on both sides. It was an autograph, I think, if I remember right. But there was, yeah, it was just the same player on both sides of the card, which is kind of weird. It's like, what, is he passing the torch to himself? That doesn't make sense. All right, we are in our ninth and final box of this half case. So that means it is time for a little last box mojo. We will collectively focus our efforts here and try to pull some fire out of box number nine if we're lucky, which we hope we are, of course. how set builders do it you know those people that would open like say 20 cases of this and then put everything together into full sets I cannot even imagine can you even imagine what that would be like I cannot you know I hear about uh, there was one guy there was Beckett did a little article on him that he was a set builder and you know was would put it into sets obviously and sell the sets that's number 10 it's cooper cup for the rams and it talked about all the stuff that they went through and it was like heritage or something like that that again has just so many many cards in it and the guy would buy like 30 or 40 cases of heritage and then just bust them all like as quick as he could, get his family and his neighbors and everybody to help him, and then have to sort all of that into, you know, not teams, but actual sets, like card one through whatever. And it talked about how long it took him to do it, and it was like several weeks, I want to say, to get it all done, which I cannot even imagine. I would not want to do that. I'm just thinking about like whoever builds, whoever buys the, whoever bought the base card spot in here. Maybe they're set builders and have the patience to sit there and put all those in order. But man, it seems like a lot. It's number to 299, Noah Fant for the Broncos, our last autograph. Coming up on the last of it here. Got a decent little pile of spacers and uh, advertising cards out of this, so can a little bit replenish my stock, I guess. 
Here comes a relic for the Raiders and Marshawn Lynch. Beast Mode, numbered to 299. So we have found both our relic and our autograph out of this last box. But of course we can still find numbered things and little die cuts like this fellow here. Numbered to 75 with Alonso and the Miami Dolphins. Hang on. Somebody was stuck to the back of Gridiron Kings. Yes. It was a Gary Jennings Jr. rated rookie hiding back there. Thinking he could get away with something, but no, we caught him. We caught him hitching a ride on the back of that other card. Fans of the game, see, now that's how you're supposed to do. Picked a team. Thank you, that person. So that is the Browns, and we'll go to the Browns since that's who that person is a fan of. All right, our last little bit here. Got a tad bit of housekeeping to take care of before we recap. And that is Aaron Andrews here. So we have the one autograph card for Aaron Andrews and two base cards. And there's no team identified on them, obviously. So all three of these are going to go to whoever comes up out of random. So this is pretty easy the way that we do this. Anytime I have 10 or more items in a list, we just do random one single time. So what's gonna happen right now, I've brought you along with me. I'm gonna copy all of our bidding categories, which includes the base card bidding category because they you know, bid same as uh, the teams did. And then we're going to buzz over here to random.org. I'm going to drop them in here. Uh, we'll scroll through it so that you can see that everything was pasted in there as it should be. And I will hit random one single time. Whatever team comes up in the number one position after we randomize gets that little group of Aaron Andrews cards. And it is heading to the 49ers. So the San Francisco 49ers are getting this and the two base cards that go along with it. So bear with me here. Let's, uh, I want to get this labeled so that I do not forget what I am doing with it and where it needs to go. So let's go ahead and label it up. All right, so the 49ers, we'll start our recap with that. Going to get the Aaron Andrews autograph and then the two uh, Aaron Andrews base cards are going to go to the 49ers as well. This is a little buzz through some of our numbered stuff. Now there's lots more numbered stuff than just this. I just set aside some of the lower ones and some of the things that are die cut for purposes of uh, recapping a quick little pass through. That actually I think is a higher numbered one. It is, it's to 160 something, but whatever, I had stacked him in there. So, so we recapped him even though it was somewhat unintentional. And the higher numbered stuff, of course, um, we're not gonna recap because there's a lot of it and it's mostly pretty high numbered. Our relics, that is Raiders, a passing the torch for the Chiefs, and the 49ers, the Eagles, the Patriots, the Rams, the Bengals, the Jags, 
and the Cardinal. So those are all of our relics from this break. Let's take a look at our autographs. Noah Fant and the Broncos to 299. For the Green Bay Packers, it's Zadarius Smith. It is numbered to five. I didn't even notice that before. It was hidden over there that it was numbered to five. So really low number hit there for the Packers. And uh, there's the uh, Darius Geis to 10 for the Redskins. Damian Harris to 299 for the Patriots. The Cleveland Browns with Eric Metcalf, number 250. The Ravens and Justice Hill, that is numbered to 299. TJ Hawkinson for the Lions, numbered to 299. DK Metcalf and the Seahawks to 299. And then there's that nice little Matt Ryan to 25 for the Falcons. That's what got us started tonight. All right, so that's the break. That's the recap. I will put up spreadsheet information here one final time for those of you who might have missed it earlier or you're watching tape delayed version and you scrolled right to the end. Here's what you need to know. I'm going to try to get this out to you uh, Wednesday. And as always, if I can get something out sooner than the date that is listed, I will gladly do so. If something takes longer than I expect or my week goes off the rails, it could always go a day later, uh, which would be Thursday. But right now I'm anticipating it to be a Wednesday shipping date. We don't have to worry about consolation cards in here. Every team pull cards, so you are all going to get packages. And a final reminder, once again, that base cards had their own bidding category. All the base goes to that bidding category. Full details, of course, in the listing description. Both Sunday and Monday night are off nights. Got to get caught up on some sorting and shipping, but we will come back on Tuesday night with a half case of Allen and Ginter baseball. Then on Wednesday, it's a new release day. We'll start at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, and open Bowman Sterling by the half case. Loose box is from a shared case. An eight box inner case of unparalleled football and a Six box half case of Heritage High Number Baseball, also loose boxes from a shared case. On Thursday, we'll open a five box case of Leaf Autograph, or I'm sorry, TriStar Autograph football jerseys, and another inner case of Unparalleled Football. And that, I guess, is it for me until Tuesday. So, everyone, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you have a great start to your week that is coming up. And I will see you again on Tuesday night. Until then, take care. Bye now.